In this video, we'll be covering the button versus big blind two bet pots. So this is one of the most common formations in the entire six max game tree, alongside the other positions against the big blind. So first off, we'll be looking at the preflop ranges, and then we will cover some of the post flop trees to take a look at some of the post flop strategies. So first up, let's take a look at the button's opening range. Here in this simulation, we've got a button opening range of roughly 44%, folding around 56% of the time. The button often chooses raise sizes between the min open size all the way up to the pre big blind open size. However, the most frequent open sizes are the 2.5 and the 2.25. Note that this is a bunching sim, so the folding ranges from the low jack, high jack, and cutoff are taken into account. And because there are slightly more ace high, ace and king cards in the deck, there are going to be slightly more stronger combos for the remaining two players. Therefore, the open size is shifted down slightly. In other simulations, you might see 2.5 being almost always used. However, because of the bunching in this simulation, we have a fair amount of 2.25. Let's take a look at the 2.5 big blind open, and we'll look at the big blind's response. Here, the big blind is continuing roughly 42% of the time, and about 14% of that is going to be as a 3-bet. Big blind 3-bet at a fairly large size. We've got between 12 big blinds and 13 and a half big blinds, so don't be afraid to 3-bet something like 12 and a half, 13, 13 and a half. However, the big blind will call this 28 and a half percent frequency and the big blind mostly calls the suited high cards such as king three suited queen five suited as well as the suited gaps all the way out to four two suited five two suited six three suited and many of the low pocket pairs up to around pocket eights a little bit of pocket nines the offsuit broadways are always going to be continued and some of the Offsuit ace x combinations all the way down to a6 suited. Note that a5 offsuit is stronger than a6 offsuit because of the wheel draw. Let's take a look at some of the other open sizes to compare 2.25 fold to the big blind. Here, big blind is going for a three bet, roughly this 4.25 big blind three bet. You add this all up, it ends up being around 14%. Now the big blind is simply calling a little bit wider, calling a few more suited gaps, S4 suited, A4 suited, and S4 offsuit, and then calling some of the more suited high cards all the way down to 10 2 suited. These offsuit connected combinations start to call. Look at them in the open, fold around. All of these also connected combos start to call all the time and almost all of the suited combos are going for a call notice still ace two offsuit is going for a fold there if we look at slightly bigger open size there are going to be more folds and throughout all of this the three bet range is going to be roughly the same for value the pocket tens up ace jack suited king queen suited ace queen offsuit king queen up ace queen offsuit and ace king offsuit as well as plenty of bluffing combos here against this 2.75 the calling range shrinks against the three big blind open the calling range shrinks further but the three bet range stays fairly similar especially the value component going all the way up to say for example a five big blind open so very large the 
big blind now is almost always continuing as a three bet. Three bet sizes can go up to 18 big blinds, 15 and a half big blinds there, and very rarely going for the call. So let's take a look at a few examples. Here we've got 20 different flops, and we'll be looking at a bit of an overview of a flop strategy. Here in this particular example set, there isn't any donking. In reality, there is a fair amount of donking on certain boards. We'll take a quick look at those now just so that you can see. So here we've got the connected low flops, and you can see that there is a fair amount of donks on some of the boards which favor the big blind, where the big blind has a fair amount of equity. These lower and connected boards, such as the six high boards, the seven high boards, will do well for the big blind. The big blind has very many pairs, straight draws, flush draws, backdoor flush draws on these kinds of boards, because the big blind did call very many of these suited, connected, suited gapped holdings. Some of the offsuit gaps and offsuit connected holdings. Going back to our initial set of flops, we'll take a look at some of the turn lines. Particularly, we'll be focusing on the barreling line for the button as an overview. Here we've got 1022. On this 1022 board, the button will be continuation betting at a very high frequency, around 80% of the time. There's a bunch of miss draws here from preflop hands as weak as six five high five four high however the big blind also has many of those same kinds of hands except many more worse combos in the range these unmade hands represent 55 percent plus an additional 20 percent a size so there's not that many pairs for the big blind the three of a kind only represents around four percent of the range the button has also a fair amount of ace highs and unmade hands, except the ace highs include all the ace king and ace queen, which essentially can value bet against weaker ace highs. Here, if the button continuation bets for water pot, the level one big blind, the big blind, the out of position player simply has to fold many of their hands weaker than, say, for example, nine high. Continuing with all of the ace high and many of the hands which wrap, wrap around this particular card, the 10. Obviously, continuing with all of the top bear holdings or the three of a kinds, which will also go for a top size raise most of the time. We'll take a look at the turn report. There is some donking, particularly on a 10. Obviously, the big blind will be calling most of their 10x. So this 10x equalizes slightly and also improves all the ace x combos to chop with each other. So a hand like ace three will chop with ace king. Take a look at a brick, say for example the seven of hearts, the big blind checks. And now we note that the button will be blasting off with these over pairs and ace ten, king ten. So top pair, top kicker plus is going for a 2x pot over bet alongside plenty of bluffs such as queen jack high, king jack high. None of the ace highs are going for this. So we've got this over bet. These king high and queen high hands block the king turn and queen turn, which will almost always continue. A lot of these ace highs fold out, so having an ace yourself will not be too good in terms of blocking folds, where in contrast the queen high and king high, because in the previous street there were already folds with some of those hands. You notice here there's some of those particular combos, jack high, queen high, king high, folded out. There's slightly less combos of king high, queen high, and jack high to fold out. When making this big over bet, it's important to block value possible block the top of the range if possible and like king queen jack king jack can block the king 10 queen 10 and jack 10. if the big blind calls and we get another undercard the big blind doesn't really improve 
most of their range is this top pair or weaker. There's only a few amount of these two pairs with a 10-7, but those also get beaten by the over pairs. So the three of a kind, the full houses, and the quads only represent about 10% of the range. The other big blind checks, the over pairs can simply rip for value alongside the strong two pairs with the 10-7. Ace-10 going for half-pot value bet. Over pairs simply just rip it in, get plenty of value from worse hands such as the top pair, weaker two pairs. Obviously, you're going to run into the three of a kind, the four houses and the quads, but if you bet small low and you get jammed on, you're going to snap forward with the other pair anyway because two pair itself can jam for value and you actually beat that. Let's take a look at another flop. More wet board now. This Jack 10 9 with a flush draw. Here, if the big blind goes for the check, the button is betting around half the time. The button will check back many of their weaker hands, such as weak pairs, 9x, 10x holdings, even some of the top pair holdings, and bet a lot of their over pairs. Pocket kings and pocket queens have the gut shot as well. King queen is the made straight. And so those hands can bet for value alongside plenty of bluffs and stuff like ace high, ace king and ace queen are all gut shots of the nuts. Other hands such as these king high and queen high hands are gut shots or open enders. Those hands can go for a bluff. If the button does check back and say, for example, if we get this three of spades, the big blind will be betting out many of their straights and three of their kinds for a very big Size. This 200% overbet is being taken with many of these straights and the three of a kinds. Note that these hands don't really have anything to worry about because the straights and three of a kinds mostly always bet the flop for the button. And so the big blind needs to take action to get value with these holdings. Bet twice the pot. Say, so for example, we get a five. Jam the river with a straight or a little over three times the pot. Fairly straightforward. You get called by plenty of these two pairs, top pairs, which are all you're recalling. These sets can go slightly smaller. Still going twice the pot. You get jammed on and now you're indifferent. So plenty of value to be had if the button checks back. The big blind simply has to go for big value and over bet on the turn and the river. So don't be afraid to go for big overbets if the button does check back, even on these wet boards. Especially on these wet boards, the button wants to bet the flop a lot of the time. In contrast, say the button does check back and we get a, another hand such as the seven of clubs. This seven of clubs improves a lot of hands into a straight. So any 8x is a straight now. There's obviously still the king queen. So the big blind here will be leading out with many of those straights. The king queen itself and the queen eight can go for that four times the pot over bet. Here, this king queen betting enormous, betting four times the pot. You get called by plenty of weaker straights, brick on the river, jam the river for the remaining 150 with that king queen. So that king queen here for this 4x pop bet is the main value component. If we look at the range itself, it is very polar. About one third of the range is that straight with the king queen and some other straights such as the queen eight, the king eight as a draw, and some hands like this 8-8 with the flush draw, some other unmade hands with the flush draw, the open ender, the gut shots, these hands are being used as a semi-bluff. There are some weak pairs being thrown in as a pure bluff. These hands can outdraw a hand like a two pair or a top pair. And so say for example, we do get that two on the river, the set can go for a block bet to get called by weaker holdings. Let's take a look at one more flop. Say, for example, this ace eight two. 
this ace a2 is definitely going to favor the button. The reason it favors the button is because the big blind will have three bet many of their stronger ace x holdings. And now it doesn't have too many top pairs compared to the big blind, compared to the button, which has a lot of top pairs here, 22.9%. And those top pairs include the ace king, ace queen, ace jack combos. The button can bet quite small, get some additional folds from the big blind. Big blind needs to be raising hands like the two pair in the set for value, splitting the bets across all three streets, so getting four bets in total rather than just three. If the big blind does call and we get and undercard, say, for example, the six of hearts, big blind checks, and now the button quite happily goes for some big bets, such as this two times a pot with a hand like ace king or ace queen or ace eight two pair, these three of a kinds with a set of twos, a set of sixes, a set of eights, and go for some fairly big bets between 100 and 200 percent. I'm sure, if there was a 150 here, that would be used with some of these combos. Say for example, we look at this 2x pot bet, the top bear holdings, the main continuing range here for the big blind. And some of these are starting to fold out. We get, say for example, the 10 of diamonds in the river, big blind goes for a check. And now the button simply rips it in with a bet or better, and goes for a small bet size with two pair. Ace king and ace queen have gotten all their value and we'll be checking back the river. In contrast, if we go for a pot size bet, get the same 10, the ace king and the ace queen can go for a small bet at low frequency in contrast, pot bet. If there's a pair on the river, those ace king and ace queens we're betting all the time. This pair on the river blocks a fair amount of two pairs. If we get an undercard, these ace king and ace queen will bet the river as well. So it depends on the river and which river improves the range versus improves a significant amount of the big blinds range to two pair. Okay, so we've covered the big blind versus button single raise pots. We looked at the preflop ranges and how they change based on the open size. We've noted that the three bet range is very similar across the different open sizes. And the pre bet size is fairly large for the big blind. And then we've looked at some of the post flop lines. And in particular, we're looking at some of the button barreling lines and some of the button checkback lines. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one.